Shanna, thanks for not reading all that stuff. <laughs> when people ask to send the bio, I always blink a little bit. Good afternoon. I think morning, maybe still. It's good to be with you guys, though. Chase, good to see you. And uh, Judge, Judge, good to see you. Shannon, thanks so much for um, the invite to speak with you today. I think I just want to share a little bit about what Junior Achievement is doing. Uh, regionally and maybe give you an update on uh, the recent legislation that's going to affect what schools do and how that affects uh, perhaps work readiness uh, efforts uh, here in the county and then certainly obviously uh, most of my time I want to thank you uh, for the investment that several of you make in providing junior achievement here uh, in your community so um, we're headquartered in Owensboro. Don't, don't put that, you know, don't hold that against me. But uh, we cover 25 counties uh, in West Kentucky. We have Breckenridge County, our far, farthest northeastern county, if you know where Breckenridge County is. And then we go all the way down to Murray, Callaway County. So 25 counties uh, across the west part of the state. Uh, last year, just most recently completed school year, we served just under 21,000 students in those 25 counties, 500 of those students, uh, right here in Ohio County. How many of you know anything about Junior Achievement? Raise your hand. Several of you. I hope those that volunteer for us raise their hand. That's always good. Uh, maybe you know about Junior Achievement because you were in Junior Achievement. Can anybody have Junior Achievement? Okay. Uh, the more seasoned you are, probably that JA experience was a afternoon or evening program. Most people think of Junior Achievement as being that evening model program where you go into Junior Achievement voluntarily, uh, you work with a bunch of other teenagers with some business advisors, you make a product, go out and sell that product. That was Junior Achievement for five or six decades. Uh, junior Achievement has changed now. It might surprise you that uh, JA programs happen in school during the school day with a business volunteer going and working with that same classroom of kids. Uh, we're also now kindergarten through 12th grade, so no longer are we just a high school program. Uh, the reason that is, is we discovered that if you wait to do a lot of the foundational learning for junior achievement, the importance of saving, the importance of living on a budget, work ethic skills, uh, how business works. You've really waited too long if you start trying to engage these kids in high school. We need that foundational learning to be driven down as early as kindergarten. Um, you guys, last year, we provided uh, 10 high school programs, 10 middle school programs uh, at the middle school level. Uh, we worked with, again, around 250 kids providing the JA Economics for Success program, which helps them with uh, career exploration, um, what they want to be when they grow up, if you will, uh, but also heavily focuses on the need of financial literacy, uh, embedding in these kids uh, skills that they're going to need in terms of managing their own money. Uh, one day. Um, at the high school level, we continue to support the county's work ready certification uh, through our JA Career Success Program, which is an unadulterated soft skills <coughs> program, helping these high school students develop and learn to hone and practice these soft skills that are important to so many uh, of your uh, regional manufacturers here. Um, I know we've got at least one HR rep, but you. If you're not in manufacturing, it might surprise you that while we've got a uh, low unemployment rate, there's still a lot of jobs out there. And sometimes these companies have trouble finding the talent and the individuals with the skill sets that they're looking for. Uh, across the United States, there's like three million available jobs because employers can't find people with the skill sets. Uh, as we continue to promote the importance of higher education, especially four-year degrees, you're now seeing a scored, uh, shortage of skilled labor, plumbers, electricians, carpenters. So junior achievement is all about helping kids define their own success. We're not an organization that's just preaching, if you don't have a four-year degree, you're not successful. Because we're seeing a lot of great jobs going under the field because employers can't find the skill sets that they want. Back to soft skills, um, 
there's some there's some angst in uh, in manufacturing because they might hire somebody one day, and they come on Monday and do a good job, and they just decide they're not going to show up on Tuesday, and then they might come Wednesday maybe, and then maybe by Thursday they're they're gone, uh, or. Oh, if I'm supposed to be there at 8, but if I get there at 8.30, that'll be okay. Uh, so there, there's a lot of, uh, again, frustration among the soft skills. 42% of regional employers that we surveyed cited that really high school students graduating from high school, entering either college or the job market, really didn't have the soft skills that regional employers were looking for. So it's important for us to continue to provide that career success program, it focuses on punctuality, work ethic, critical thinking, problem solving, showing up to work on time, uh, how to shake hands, if you've ever shaken hands with somebody that doesn't really have that good, interviewing techniques, uh, writing resumes and cover letters, uh, all these things that will help your children and hopefully Ohio County students be more competitive in that job market. You know, really to, to drive everything I'm going to say to down to maybe you all remembering one thing is think of junior achievement like that old adage. You can give a person a fish and feed them for a day, or you can teach someone to fish and feed them for a lifetime. And that's really what we're doing with your help is passing on, working with your local schools. I didn't see Scott here today, but we have a really good relationship with your local school system. Uh, and we're working hand in hand with them as your bridge to the education sector. Another way to look at junior achievement is we were created back in 1919 as the business community's nonprofit. So we're your nonprofit chamber members, and we serve as a bridge to your school system. Uh, through our innovative programs, through our experiential programs, we give you a voice in education, give you an opportunity to really hone the skills and help define your future workforce by volunteering and supporting junior achievement. So this past session was quite busy uh, with the legislation. Uh, I'm not going to talk about pension. Uh, I'm going to talk about two other bill passages that is going to affect education. Uh, there was a financial literacy bill that was introduced and passed both the House and the Senate, the governor has signed it. It would be implemented in 2020 school year. But it requires schools now, kindergarten through 12th grade, to have a demonstrated education curriculum in the area of financial literacy. So we're working with uh, Mr. Lewis, uh, all the other school systems <coughs> across our area, about how Junior Achievement can be that solution provider by providing our programs. Again, as early as kindergarten, we're teaching kids the importance of saving, the difference in a need and a want, et cetera. We have graded programs all the way from kindergarten to 12th grade. So we have programs in place that your schools can use uh, to help meet this unfunded mandate. Uh, there's also a new word for soft skills. Uh, it's now called essential skills, and there was a uh, passage of that, uh, and that would begin in the 1920 school year. Schools now have to demonstrate that they're teaching soft skills beginning in the ninth grade year, and that they have a certain skill set that they can show um, proficiency on by the time they graduate. Again, junior achievement is, is well positioned uh, to be able to be the solution provider for those essential skills. Uh, all we need are the volunteers that are willing to go into the schools and the funding and the financial support to help pay those programs. Everything gets down to money, doesn't it? I'm sure. Uh, by the way, we've been uh, very, at, your, at your desk. I, I want to make sure I say this before I forget. There is a pledge form for you to use if you're so inclined to help us next school year. Uh, we didn't quite raise the amount of money that we needed to this school year, but we went ahead and provided the programs because it's very important to us that we're serving Ohio County kids. But I would like for you to look on the front page and um, notice who our supporters are. A great big thank you again to Ohio County <coughs> Fiscal Court uh, for your, your big investment in our programs. Uh, you see AT&T regionally supported us, Ohio County Schools, uh, Big Rivers Electric, Moore Ford, 
Walmart here locally, First United, uh, excuse me, there's a typo there, bank. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, National Office Furniture, uh, Vince, and uh, McDonald's, Farm Bureau, and, and George Chin. Uh, those were our local supporters here. We have the lowest cost of any junior achievement organization in the nation, which also makes us one of the lowest cost for any youth serving agency across our region. Uh, we serve these 21,000 students this year at an average cost of $20 per student. <coughs> to give you some idea of that relativity, um, across Kentucky, uh, their school system's cost is around nine to $10,000 per student annually. So they just kind of give you some kind of idea, and I'm not comparing apples to apples to oranges here. I'm not trying to do that, but just give you an idea of the good stewards that we are with your local dollars. We stretch that as far as we can to make sure that we're serving uh, your students. You also, on your desk or on your table, uh, you've got some uh, opportunities there, ways that you can engage with junior achievement. Um, I'm hoping that eventually we'll have elementary programs here. Uh, we firmly believe that junior achievement is more impactful if we can provide a student journey because our programs build upon each other. So instead of just one touch and one grade level, we would like to see a progression of junior achievement as they go through their K-12 through uh, career. So we have volunteer opportunities right now at the middle school level and the high school level. Um, we have some events coming up. All of your money would be designated back to Ohio County. So if you go to an event in, in Owensboro or somewhere else, um, if we know that you're from Ohio County, we're gonna designate that money back to your community. So we're not mingling money. That's always a first question that I'll get to. Uh, are, are you taking Ohio County money and spending it over in Davis or Henderson? No, we're not. Uh, we're keeping all of the county's money separate. So money raised in Ohio County serves Ohio County kids. Same thing in Henderson, McLean, wherever. You see the funding opportunities there on uh, the pledge form. Uh, and would invite you, if, if you're so inclined, to make a tax-deductible donation. Junior Achievement can certainly use it. Uh, we can put that money uh, to good use. And we have a um, prediction that with the new mandates in financial literacy and essential skills, that the need for junior achievement in our schools, including your local schools, is going to increase. Uh, schools really right now, unless they reinvent the wheel, aren't ideally positioned to just take these unfunded mandates and create new programming. Uh, where we have that in place can easily do that if we have the support. With that, I know that uh, you all like to get out on time. Shannon, was there anything else that you wanted me to cover? I don't think you've done a good job. Okay. Well, we greatly appreciate the opportunity, and, and we do see that sincerely as an opportunity to serve your kids. Uh, Chase, uh, particularly, has been um, very critical to our relationship here. Uh, as you know, um, the great job that he does, and we've been most appreciative of, of his counsel and his advice and his support uh, of our efforts, as well as the judge and others that I've maybe mentioned today. So thank you again for the opportunity to serve your kids. Thanks for letting me share a little bit about junior achievement, and hope you have a wonderful summer. Thanks. Appreciate that, Dan. We appreciate everything that you're doing for the county and the kids. Right now, I want to recognize um, Second Quarter Chamber Excellence Award, and that goes to Beaver Down Tourism. So Paul and Joe Beth, would you come up? Now we're going to recognize the outgoing officers and directors, Seth Southerd and Katie Peake. Would you come up? And now we're going to recognize our new officers and directors, so if everybody would come up that's an officer or director. We do have most of our 2018-2019 uh, officers and directors with us today. There are a few that are not able to attend today. But if you'll bear with me, we need to go over the oath of office, and then there is a... Is that everybody? All you officers? We'll be
begin by going over the oath of office, and then I'll ask you if you accept this charge. The office to which you have been elected is one of dignity and importance. In accepting this office, you undertake a responsibility which is not to be assumed lightly nor carelessly discharged. You are charged with the duties of seriously and resolutely furthering the objectives of the Ohio County Chamber of Commerce. With the policies and bylaws as your guide, you must ever be ready to exercise the function of the office, office which, which you are entrusted. Further, you are charged with governing this organization according to the laws of democracy, under which laws every person who wishes to speak shall be heard, toward the end that in every matter considered, the best opinion shall prevail through the expressed will of the majority and the best course of action followed. Do you accept this charge? We do, yes. Now if you'll raise your hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear or affirm I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will seriously execute the office that I will seriously execute the office to which I have been elected to which I have been elected of the Ohio County Chamber of Commerce of the Ohio County Chamber of Commerce and will to the best of my ability and will to the best of my ability Serve as a living example. Serve as a living example of this organization's philosophy. Of this organization's philosophy and beliefs embodied. And beliefs embodied in the Chamber of Commerce Creed. In the Chamber of Commerce Creed. So help me God. So help me God. Very good. Before you leave, while you're still standing here, I'd like to take this opportunity. If you will, each of you, if you will introduce yourself, you know, state who you are, um, what role, or if you're a director, or what office you may hold, and then what organization you're with. And if you don't mind, we'll just start at the end over there. I'm Tiffany Webster, I'm with Christina Fatigue, and I'd say I'm just a director. Just. <laughs> My name is Travis Johnson. I, too, am a new director. I'm an attorney for Jackson Dow. Uh, we have offices in Hartford and Owensboro. I'm a product of Ohio County, and I'm thankful for this opportunity. Uh, I'm Kyle Martin with Home Street Home Care, and I'm a director. I'm Jim Hall, and I'm the office administrator for the chamber, and also serve as secretary. Chase Vincent with the Ohio County. <laughs> 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 You're a right next to you. <laughs> I'm Jamie Evans, and I'm the director of rehab at Ohio County Hospital, and I am a director. Chase Vincent with the Ohio County Economic Development Alliance, and I am the chamber treasurer. I'm Sarah Stone. I'm an internal auditor at Citizens Bank, and I'm a director. I'm Lauren Allen, and I'm the vice president at William L. Banks Funeral Home, and I'm a director. <coughs> My name is Brian Belcher. I'm a physical therapist assistant with Fuller Physical Therapy, and I will be serving as your vice president. The chamber. I'm Shannon Coots and I am the branch manager for First United Bank and I will be your president. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Teresa Ball, I'm with Tanner Management McDonald's, I'm the director of business services and I am a director as well. Very good, would you join with me and give them a round of applause for the officers for taking the time out of their busy schedules to fill this role. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Before uh, you all return to your seats, um, just so that we can get a group picture, Judson Hunter, our outgoing president, couldn't be here today, but it is typical. Oh, that the uh, the outgoing president uh, passed the gavel to the incoming president. So I want to present this to our incoming president, Shannon Coots, um, for serving as our 2018-2019 president of the Chamber of Commerce and. Please join me in giving her a round of applause. Okay, I'm going to draw for the um, spotlight, business spotlight. State Farm, Carter Herald. Okay. All right, 
and now I'm going to do the door prize. Everybody get your red tickets out. Citizens Bank has donated a thousand dollars. Just kidding. Six zero eight six six zero. All right, Sam. everybody for coming out and joining the chamber today. Please come back. Our next meeting will be September 18th, so you'll get a little break. Alright, have a good day. Oh, Jody wants to make an announcement real quick. I sat behind your table and I said the Jerusalem Ridge Foundation is bringing back the festival this year. That's what we did. Yay! Thank you. Because it really impacts our entire county and the surrounding counties too. Um, so I wanted you to all be aware of it, and speaking to the chamber, I do want you to feel invested in this opportunity to be able to support your county and have this come uh, be a, a thing that the whole county is behind the sponsors. There is a Vine Grove who puts on a festival, and she sells a four-day ticket for $10. And she has major headlines, like the headliners on letters, those run up there. They usually <laughs> they run up there to pull in this kind of challenge. They sell a 10 day ticket. And I asked her, I said, How do you do that? How do you sell a 10 day ticket? And she said, Every single business in my county is going to something. So I'm throwing that out there. We will be contacting you. Um, she said, Even our gas station and everybody is going to get behind this because it does influence everybody. And one thing that impressed me when we were thinking about bringing this back, I did well, one day up at the Ridge, and it was O'Reilly's. Nobody heard from O'Reilly's. They said, bring that festival back. You have no idea. That was our best week. I would have never thought that an auto parts place would do, do business over a festival. But they do. They have cars coming in from all across the country. We've already had people contact us from six different international states or international countries. So just want to throw it out there, get excited, get behind it, and we'll be visiting you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Uh, I got another guest speaker, so sorry. Shannon, thank you all very, very much. I know you're wanting to leave, so I'll make this very, very brief. I just want to say congratulations right real quick to all the uh, new uh, directors and uh, especially your new officers. And I wanted to mention briefly from Congressman Comer, he's going to be having a workshop in Madisonville and Tompkinsville for grants in August. The date will be August the 6th in Madisonville and August the 7th in Tompkinsville. And it'll be a workshop to talk about how you apply for grants, grants.gov. So all uh, your agencies, such as your fire departments and, and, and whomever that work with grants daily or weekly, that'll be a good opportunity for you to learn how to, to work with those uh, departments. But I also wanted to mention right real quick, I know all of you all have family and friends and neighbors, and I cannot stress this uh, enough please contact Congressman Comer's office if you know of anyone who needs help with their Social Security disability case or if with the VA, you've got a veteran friend out there or a neighbor that needs help with a veteran's issue, please contact the Congressman's office and help those people because that's what we're here for. And I just really appreciate the opportunity to be here today and thank all of you very, very much.